Hey everybody, I'm going to go through the uh, previews now. Break it up a little bit from the uh, Alex Ross book. I'm going to get back to that and try to get it done this weekend. But this is really cool. Red Goblin number one. This is uh, the December previews for everything coming out in February. That's next month. So this is um, number 15, December for February 2023. Look at that cool cover there. Red Goblin number one. The deadliest goblin of all. I was looking at this, and I said, this cover looks familiar. And I went through my books, and on my, um, what if, Infinity Dark Rain. I was like, look how cool or close that cover looks to that. I mean, I guess you, there's only so many uh, grimacing looks and uh, really evil looks you can do. So, but it just looks close to it. I mean, I thought it was cool. I'm going to do a flip through this. This is a really good story in this what if uh, book. If the goblin got the uh, gauntlet, Infinity Gauntlet, it was pretty pretty wild story if you don't have this one check this one out if you can find it somewhere well, i'm gonna do a flip through for it and try to do a reading because i i was um really it was it was kind of sad and but it was just entertaining i was like wow i can't believe how this guy is i mean norman in this book the way he acts and everything and just the things he's able to do with that gauntlet in the past and the present and wow so if you, if you if you read that story, let me know about it, what you think about it. But I'm, I'm going to try to do a flip through this because that's really good. But now let's get through this and see what uh, they have for, I'll do part one of this uh, stuff coming out in February. So there's the cover there. And we got To Kill a Cat, The Amazing Spider-Man number 19. Ramita's doing a cover. I see Terry Dotson's going to be doing the inside of this one. This looks this going to be really good. I like Terry Dotson artwork. Okay, now these, what do you think about these? Disney 100, I guess, is it 100 years or something like that? Disney 100, what if Mickey and friends were exposed to cosmic rays? 100 years of wonder. Because they already did a few other covers already, but now they're going to do everything with the Mickey Mouse characters and stuff, Disney characters. This is a variant cover for Amazing Spider-Man number 19. By Giada Parasinato. Very cool. These look like marshmallows. But that's cool. Okay. Now this is a big story that's coming out. This um, sins of sinister. Okay. This is immoral X Men number one of three. Look at that. Got a wild uh, Captain America cover. Let's see. It's in two variants there. Let's see what's to say. Adored and respected. They said the mutants were humanity's future. It's 10 years later, and they were proven to be right. The X-Men exist in a world that adores and respects them. So why are they sworn to crush it? What? Okay. But while they do, Emma can take a few minutes out to crush Mr. Sinister. So I guess this is what she's doing over on the cover here. Wow. Okay, now we got Storm and the Brotherhood of Mutants, number one of three. Some variant covers there. This is a cool cover here. I like this. And then we got another cover over here. Storm and the Brotherhood of Mutants. Sins of Sinister. So what's this say back here? The New Brotherhood. Ten years from now, Mars has been destroyed, and now Storm wants revenge. To get it, the New Brotherhood will battle their way through he through heck to seek the greatest secret of the Sinister Age. But they are fighting to save the world or end it. But are they fighting to save the world or end it? And who is the man called Iron Fire? Okay, now we got Nightcrawlers, number one of three. cover there. Sins of Sinister, year 10, designs by Paco Medina. Then we got another one over here. Cool. And then this one here, this one is really nice. I like this, the shadows in the background and everything with the eyes, just the eyes and the teeth. Wow. Okay, now we got Sins of Sinister, or Sinister's Private Assassins. Ten years into a twisted future, Mr. Sinister unleashes his private army of assassins 
The Legion of Night. Meet Wagnerine. Okay. Commanding this killer crew of brainwashed hybrids, each one of genetic mix of Nightcrawler and another one of Marvel's most murderous mutants. Mysterious forces seek to, to break Sinister's control over these fatal fanatics, to turn them against him. But who are they? And who are their true... And what are their true motives? Enter Mother Righteous. Now, what in the world is that one? I don't know if that's her right there. Or somebody else coming out. In a meeting of the most powerful players in the universe. Mother Righteous, that's different. Just a second. Okay, now we're here with Red Goblin number one. Pretty wild looking. Interior art from issue one. Okay, and this is from featuring Stormbreaker Jan Baza, Bazadua. Bazadua, that's cool. The newest and deadliest Red Goblin, spinning out of the pages of Venom, Normie Osborne receives his own symbiote at last as a new Red Robin. Will Normie fulfill his destiny as an Osborne, or will he and his symbiote be able to make a difference for the better? Now, what in the world? That's kind of interesting. Kind of like a carnage type thing. But see, this one's going to be like red, but maybe a good guy. Kind of like Venom. So, okay. Now we got Red Goblin, the cover here. Pretty wild. Okay, now we got another cover here. Venom, number 16. I got behind on collecting these. I got to go back and get them because I like the story so far. And this goes in the dark web here. There's a variant down here. Planet of the Apes variant. Stormbreakers variant. Okay. Let's see. With the truth about Eddie Brock, Bedlam and the Garden of Time revealed at last, Eddie has no choice but to move heaven, earth, space, and time to get back to his son. But it may be for naught. But it may all be for naught. Eddie's greatest fears are at the precipice of being realized, as Dylan may still succumb to the darkness within him. Oh, boy. Now we got Dark Web Finale. Look at these crazy things on here. Wow. And we got a variant down here. You see the weird reflections and everything, how they turn. Okay. Let's see. The dawn rises after... The demonic invasion of New York City. But what will that light reveal? Okay. It will reveal Chasm's final gambit and the new denizens of Heck he helped create and unleash on Spider Man and the X Men. See how Dark Web changed this city's landscape forever. Wow. Ooh, look at this one Bloodline. Daughter of Blade, number one of five. That's cool. Got another cover over here. Well, that's interior art. That's a variant, no. Okay, and then we got the, probably a main cover here. This looks cool. Ryan Stegman. It's in her blood. Brielle Brooks is a good kid, no matter what her teachers say. It's not her fault she's developing vampiric superpowers and the undead want to brawl. This is almost, this reminded me when I saw this before, this reminded me like of a um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, kind of like a comedy uh, horror tale. And as if problems at school aren't enough, Bree's got a wild ride ahead of her. She's about to discover that she's the daughter of the infamous vampire hunter and daywalker known as Blade. <laughs> okay. Let's see what they're gonna do with that one. That might be this might be one I would um, pick up just to see. Okay, now we got interior art from Bloodline, Daughter of Blade. Oop, pretty wild, pretty wild. Okay, violent. That's when gonna, it's gonna be more adult there. Avengers End Times, Marvel Tales number one. That's pretty cool. Nick Bradshaw artwork. Let's see, um, written by Brian Michael Bendis. Is this collecting issues or something? Let's see. Oh, uh, yeah. The Avengers reunite with one of their own. Long believed dead, 
as we celebrate the legacy of House of Ideas with Marvel Tales. This anthology series shines a spotlight on fan-favorite characters, features timeless stories, and highlights some of Marvel's most impressive talent from the past eight decades. Okay, they can see it. Looks like Avengers 31 to 34. Any other ones there? That's about it. Avengers Reassemble. Cool. Now we got Betsy Braddock, Captain Britain number one. Cool. And we got some inside artwork here. Black and white, I'm sure it's going to be in color. Very cool. The captain comes home, it says. And she's got a whole new mission. With Otherworld settled, Braddock Manor restored, and her brother Captain Avalon at her side. You think things look pretty good for Betsy Braddock. Only it turns out good old Britain doesn't want her back. No one wants a mutant menace carrying the shield of Captain Britain. And Betsy's made more than a few enemies along her way. Wow. There's the cover there. Cool. What are they going to be doing with her? You shall find out if you read it. Here we go. Bishop, War College, number one of five. That looks wild there. The all new, all great X Men debut. Debut. Krakoa is an island paradise, and it's a vulnerable one, but not with Lucas Bishop on the case. All right. What does any let's see? Armor Surge Cam Lang Aura Charles Amass. These are his students. This course, their course objective: get strong, defend the island, keep mutant kind safe. What does any of that have to do with an all? Black X-Men team. Cool. Find out here. That's different. And what we got here. Look at these. Bishop. War College. That's different. Never heard that before. That's something different. Let me see what they're going to do with that one. Okay. Now we got Demon Wars. Down in Flames. Number one. Phoenix versus Magic. Things are heating up in Momoko Marvel, Momoko's Marvel Universe. The spirit world is divided. Its inhabitants, strange creatures called yokai, have chosen sides, and the two factions are on the brink of all out war. Okay, now we got this. Wild cover. Okay, this looked interesting. Silver Surfer Ghost Light number one of five. That's a really nice cover there. And then we got interior art right here. Okay, Tony Brooks and her family have moved into the quiet town of Sweetwater, but nothing is quite what it seems in their new home. What mystery did Tony and her family unravel? that would call upon the sentinel of the spaceways, the Silver Surfer. Okay. He's way out there. What brought him into the fold? That's cool. Just a second. Okay, now what do we have here? Avengers, Kang the Conqueror. Okay, this must be a facsimile version. Yep. This is number eight of Avengers. From the future, from the far future comes Kang the Conqueror. Destined to be one of the greatest and most persistent enemies the Avengers have ever known. Time traveling. Okay, now we got Avengers War Across Time. Cool artwork. There's a variant cover down here. War Across Time, number time, number two of five. Okay, we got Thor, Iron Man, Captain America, Giant Man, and the Wasp. The original Avengers invade the Baxter building and break the barriers between worlds. Now we have Avengers Assemble. Wild cover. Avengers number 65. 
Avengers Assemble Chapter 6 The Secret of Avenger Prime He is the most important Avenger in the multiverse. He spent years manning a watchtower at the heart of all creation all by himself. Now his story can be told as he suddenly finds himself no longer alone, but instead surrounded by an unbelievable gallery or gathering of heroes. Here we got Avengers Assemble again. Wild cover there. This is Avengers Forever number 14. Avengers Assemble Chapter 7. The greatest gathering of Avengers in the history of ever. <laughs> the mightiest heroes of the multiverse. The protectors of the prehistoric Earth. And the mainstay Avengers of the present day Marvel Universe. At last, they all stand together in one place. United against a common foe. Alright. Now we got Monica Rambeau, Photon. Very colorful cover. There's a variant down here. What the, it, I mean, they must going to be bringing the Planet of the Apes into the fold I'm seeing here because they got all these variant covers from them, just like they did with Aliens and Carnage and uh, who else? Predator. All that. It's kind of it's pretty cool. This is number three of five. The fate of a world relies on the power of Photon. Still, still searching for answers as to why the universe has gone all topsy-turvy, Monica Rambeau blazes into a forgotten corner of the cosmos. But even as she seeks help to put her friends, but even as she seeks help to put her friends, family, and life right side up again, she encounters a group of wanderers who desperately need her assistance to survive. Hmm. All right. Then we got Scarlet Witch number two. Wild covers, there's this one here. And then we have a Planet of the Apes variant. Pretty scary looking. Okay, Scarlet Witch battles Dream Queen. Wanda Maximoff is no stranger to grief. So when Viv Vision stumbles through Wanda's door, exhausted and terrified of the nightmares playing her mother's death on repeat. Wanda dives into Viv's dreams to find the cause of the android's suffering. Wow. Okay, now we got this, which I gotta make sure I get all of these. Fantastic Four number four. I want the Alex Ross cover there. That's cool. He's done, He does, like, multiple covers for these books. This one's cool, too. Okay, whatever happened to the Fantastic Four... No more foreshadowing. Oh, cool, that's funny. What really happened back in New York is finally revealed, but it's still affecting matters here in the present, where Ben and Alicia's li lives hang in the balance, and it'll take more than a reunion to save them. Plus, alien invaders from another galaxy, always. Okay, the four are finally back together. Hope they survive the experience. And here's another one here. Look at that. Wow. Action. All these wild looking monsters here. Oh, clobbering time there. Ouch. Boy, there's Reed over there wrapped. Got somebody wrapped. And Sue's leaping. Oh, she's on one of her um, invisible uh, flight, flight boards or something. Okay, now we got Joe Fix It here. Joe Fix It number two of five. Uh oh. Spidey's in there. There's no uh, Planet of the Apes variant. <laughs> he's like, uh, I fold. <laughs> I guess he said, uh, let the Wookiee win. Okay, what do we see? Um, we, Peter David's okay. Yeah, he's writing this. Peter David's return to one of the most iconic Hulk, Hulk stories continues. Everyone wants to know who the mysterious Joe Fixit really is, and Spider-Man is on the case, complete with location-appropriate disguises. <laughs> okay, now we got the Invincible Iron Man. This is cool. I like when they do covers like that, it's like, wow. Is he Iron Man or is he Tony Stark? It looks like he's Iron Man. I am Iron Man. 
Okay, Invincible, Iron Man number three. Tony Stark breaks bad. Okay, no one is safe around Tony Stark. A close friend is dead, and the culprit looks to be Tony himself. But who is the real murderer? Murderer. And why are they trying to frame Iron Man? All this plus a new armor for the war machine. For war machine. Cool. <clears throat> now we got Doctor Strange, Fall, Sunrise, number 404. That's a wild cover. Okay, Doctor Strange enters the cursed castle of Mariah Minson, or Minsa, to challenge a superlunary power and complete an impossible task. As the sun sets, a voice echoes, there are no good places to die. Now we got Wasp number two of four. The main cover there, very colorful, bright red. And then a variant down here. Okay, what do we got? When Whirlwind fails to identify the person who forced the attack on the Wasp, Janet and Van and Nadia Van Dyne. Okay, on the Wasp, Janet and Nadia Van Dyne must combine their skills to locate their new foe. But something about this case seems unnervingly familiar to Jan. Can she figure out what it is in time to save their lives? I hope so. Now we get Deadpool, number four. And Stormbreaker, Breaker, Martin Coccola. Coccolo. Variant over here. From another Stormbreaker, Nick Klein. And we got this one here, Planet of the Apes variant. Mike McCone. Okay, what's this one say? Betrayed. Lady Deathstrike cruelly betrays her recent partner in assassination. Deadpool. Or what? Or wait. Is that... Is it that Deadpool has casually betrayed his reluctant murder buddy Lady Deathstrike? <laughs> it's all going to depend on whose version you believe. But either way, it's time for a bloody reprisal, it says. <laughs> Man... Now we have uh, Terry Dotson's going to be doing the, the artwork in here. Amazing Spider-Man. That's cool. John Romita cover. Number 19. Okay. There's a variant over here. No prize variant. Let me know if you're going to be collecting these. I was wondering about these when I saw them. They do those special covers all the time and everything. They, and I'm sure it helps sells. So <clears throat> that's why they do it. Let's see. Um, Dark Web is over, but the effects will shake Spider-Man for a long time. To recover, Peter Parker and Felicia Hardy, a.k.a. the Black Cat, escape from the city to an exclusive spa in the Catskills. Okay. Now we got another one here. This is number 20 of The Amazing Spider-Man. To Kill a Cat. Okay, and then they got the Planet of the Apes variant for both of these, I think. Yeah, 19 and 20. Someone tries to kill Spidey and Black Cat. You thought this would be easy for Peter. Nope. The special two-parter from superstar guest Joe Kelly and Terry Dotson concludes here. All right. So he's just going to do two books, I guess. 19 and 20. Hmm. Now we're going on here. Mary Jane and Black Cat number 3 of 5. Awesome J. Scott Camel cover. Let's see. Mary Jane Watson and Felicia Hardy are trapped in limbo by Belasco. And if they want to escape... They'll have, to, they'll have to heist their way out. A shaky alliance with an unexpected ally may be their only hope to survive the Screaming Tower. Hmm. Now we got Miles Morales, Spider-Man, number three. Uh-oh, he looks in trouble. You got artwork by New Stormbreaker, Federico Vicentini. 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 Cool. This is Miles Morales, number three. She's a real rabble-rouser, it says. Okay. For years, she schemed in the shadows. Now rabble is finally ready to unleash an, uh, an assault on everything and everyone Miles Morales loves. But why does she hate Spider-Man so dang much, it says. What's, what secrets from Spidey's past still stand to be revealed? To survive her, first Spidey will need to survive the Scorpion. Miles can't save everyone wow man new characters coming in let me see gold goblin number four or five i didn't pick up any of these 
I started to pick up number one just to see what it was about. And I wasn't sure, so I just put it back. Okay, this one's... Norman was handed his lo his first losses through throughout Dark Web, but he's not about to make it a habit. His first target, Jack-O-Lantern. Wow. But is Norman still in someone else's crosshairs? Will this new zeal lead him down the dark path that we all know he's headed toward? You better believe it. <laughs> okay, now we got Deadly Neighborhood Spider-Man number 505. That's a wild cover there. Okay, what's it say? The epic final installment in the spider redefining saga from Taboo B. Earl and Juan Ferreira. Ferreira. As the claws of the demon bear dig into Spider-Man's very soul, will he be able to let go of his selfishness and fear and put power and responsibility above everything else? Let's hope so. Now we have Spider-Man number five. I like Mark Bagley's artwork, really cool. Okay, the end of the Spider-Verse continues. See a new side of, Sp of Peter Parker and the spider mythos. You see Shathra and her forces work towards the extinction of Ra Arachnida sapiens. Plus, this issue includes a special super heroic backup story featuring Spider-Man and Photon celebrating, celebrating Black History Month. All right. Okay, now we got Spider-Man, The Lost Hunt, 4 or 5. Death and Rebirth. That's a cool cover. I like the artwork on that. You said Ryan Brown. Hmm. As Peter finds himself beaten and broken, all seems lost. But who stopped Gregor from landing a killing blow? Okay. Find out as we learn about the secret history of the Kravenoff legacy and the mysterious figure who taught Sergei all he know, all he knew. Now we got Peter Parker and Miles Morales, Spider-Man, Double Trouble, number four of four. Last one, folks. Cool cartoony artwork. That's a cool one there, variant. It's a showdown against Thanos, keynote speaker, with their usual heroics. When their user, usual heroics fail, <laughs> Miles Morales and Peter Parker must draw inspiration from their enemies to escape the next generation of villains' convention alive. Well, now we get Miracle Man by Gaiman and Buckingham, the Silver Age number five. Miracle Man continues his search for what's his name, Richard Dauntless, his neighbor names, aka Young Miracle Man. All right. Oh, this is cool. I ordered two of these. You know, I like to get one. I don't know if I'll get one greater or not. It just since it's such a cool cover, and usually sometimes these go up in price. Amazing Spider-Man number one twenty-nine facsimile edition, very cool. Okay, he's different. He's deadly. He's the Punisher, but why does he have Spider-Man in his sights? Find out as Frank Castle makes his mighty Marvel debut in an all-time classic from legendary creators Jerry Conway and Ross Andrew. Okay, see that's cool. Now we got Punisher War Journal, number base number one. Okay, what's he doing? He's frowning. The origin of the War Journal. Before he was the Punisher, Frank Castle was a husband, a father, and a Marine. Not necessarily in that order. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see what this one is. This one's Murder World, Moon Knight, number one. I started to pick up the main book. I wasn't sure. I didn't I put it back. Okay, under the harsh light of the moon, there is no escape, and with only a handful of contestants left, anything can happen. Murder World is a life or death game of treachery and tragedy brought to you by Jim Zub, Ray Fox, and Lucia Prezari. Arcade and his schemes have been a punchline in the past, but this contest is no joke. All right. Wow, that's cool. Is that a... Oh, I thought that was... Yeah, I think it's a um, connecting cover, or they're connecting covers. But this is X-Men number 19 over here on the left with a variant. Oh, that's cool. Homage. Terry Dotson. 
Then over here, Lord of the Brood, Prelude, Captain Marvel. On the right, number 46. It is a uh, cover variant. Let's see what this one is. Lord of, Lord of the Brood, part one. When the X-Men get a distress call from deep space, they find that their galaxy's brood problem is not as solved as they thought. <laughs> and over here, we got Revenge of the Brood, part four. Carol Danvers is on an express elevator to her own personal, personal bad place. And the brood empress is determined to ensure the captain and all of her friends make it to their destination. Wow. All right, that's all I have for now. I'm going to stop there. I'll get started on part two next. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you guys are going to be picking up. Collected Dude is out.